M0FXB, welcome to my channel, learning about the IJV firmware. We have this website here and it's picking out a couple of programs, but there is firmware links here and a instruction manual in English. First thing I'm going to do is show you these two programs. One of them is called the K5 program for Windows. And it, this is it. You can see it here in blue. And what it does, it actually makes a backup of your device. It reads the calibration. It rewrites the calibration. It writes the firmware ETC. Now, I've not used this, but I have downloaded it. And we're going to quickly run it and just see what we think. First thing I'll do is go to the program. And remember, to, to download it, it's literally just click this thing here and download and run it. And you end up with this window here. You connect your cable to the radio in the normal way. Look, it already knows that I haven't put it into firmware mode. So I'm going to turn it off. Take out the programming cable for now. Put it in. Turn it on. We're in firmware mode because the, the torch is on. We're going to push it in. The thing that made me notice the, this firmware was someone using CW. It looked really cool. So what I'm going to do is completely close it and then reopen it. I've created a shortcut. When you extract the, file, the program into a folder on your computer, there'll be a shortcut there. I just pinned it to my taskbar at the bottom. So double click and the program opens. And hopefully this time it's going to see that it's open. Let's just make sure we haven't opened it twice, which it looks like we actually have done. Yeah, there it is there. So that one is working. Radio is in firmware update mode. So we'll close the other one and you can see here it's COM 11. Now I've literally have never done this. I'm not going to write anything. I'm going to just read for now. So we're going to read configuration. Radio is in firmware mode. Turn off the radio, then back on whilst not whilst not pressing the PTT. Okay, so that means to read the configuration, you, you should just be in normal mode. Fair enough, I'm not gonna touch that. Now I'm gonna click read calibration. And yeah, so it doesn't want me to do it in firmware mode, that's fine, so let's turn it off. Like it says, we're gonna close the window, reopen it, and this time we're gonna turn it on Like so. Shouldn't be in firmware mode. Close it, reopen. And then we're going to wait. What it says radio is in, it knows that it's got Exuma on there. <laughs> Has custom AES key? No, I don't know. Is in lock screen? No, I literally don't know. Fetching radio deal. So let's try it. Let's just go read configuration. Okay, clever, isn't it? So I'm not trying to say that I know what I'm doing here. I'm just showing you the links to the software and you give it a go. Look, it wants me to save my configuration. So I'm going to put my config and I call it my camouflage. The idea behind this is that if you do do a firmware update, you've got a backup. That's the point. So we read that. Now let's read the calibration. And now it's reading the calibration. But this time it's my calibration camouflage. So you've now got a backup. Save. OK. So now when it goes to write firmware, I'm going to click that. I'm going to find the actual firmware for IJV and see if it makes me put it into firmware mode, which I'm sure it will. So let's scroll up a bit. It says here firmware IJV. Let's put it here in the, in the thing. You can see it's that one there. OK, so we know where it is. So let's try that software again. I'm sure it's going to say to me, put it in firmware mode. We're going to write firmware. We want to find where that's downloaded. I don't want to put the wrong one. You can see that it's got my configuration. But I want the IJV. Try again, see if I can find it. Desktop, I did have, I created a file called IJV. So keep looking. On my desktop. 
keep going past it. There it is there. There it is there, the firmware. So, uploading firmware to radio. Right, it says it's not in firmware mode. We knew it would say that. So we're going to turn, unplug the cable, turn it off. Hold down the PTT. It was an Exuma firmware. So hold down the PTT, turn on. We've got the white light now. Now I've never used this firmware. I believe you can get single screen in this is what I think, but I'm not sure. Right, so let's try it again. We've got it all on. Let's hit right firmware, select the same file, and it's flashing now, okay? So I hope this helps you because it gives you an idea of, of what you can do. There's really good instructions here in English as well. Backup of calibration and original configuration. Portable radio updater. You can also load the firmware with the official Quashang program. Floor, you are not allowed to save either configuration or calibration from the EEPROM. That's the original stuff. You can see it's already rebooted. Uploading the firmware. Yeah, it says here the usual instructions, really what we just did. At the end of it, turn it off. Now, what's it say here about Kenwood cables, adjusting the radio after update, performance and automatic VFO reset. Start the radio by pressing the PTT and exit. Set menu as described. So let's just increase the size of that. I'm not really going to try and show you how to use it because I don't know how to use it. But I'm just going to quickly show you for a couple of minutes. Is that? Let's turn it off and on. Unplug it. Turn it off, then on. It does say IJF, IJV. Sorry, apologies. And let's just key the mic for Hubnet. Let's see if I can get into Hubnet by going. Star three four one five two two. Yeah, that's interesting. Now I did try and load some firmware on a broken radio. I might try that now. One that I managed to. Well, I, I put the. Um, the Fadgy Reborn on, and now I can't really do it. works as Fadgy Reborn, but nothing else. So I just wondered if I could, but I didn't make a backup. And this is the key thing here you know, you have to make a backup, but that seems to be working. Um, I'm just guessing now by pressing buttons, you know, so menu. The menu is on the left, as like the original. Uh, Oh, there's a lot to learn here, isn't there? Because it does CW, doesn't it? I'll learn it and come back. Exit works. We've got F3. F2. Still does the... Oh, look at that. We've got single mode. Well, that's good that it does that. I don't know how to change the actual mode. Um, oh, you've got some sort of... That's DTMF, is it? Scan. Let's just exit ever, turn it on and off. So what I'll do is I'll watch a couple of videos now of people using this way. But I'm glad you've seen that. I'm going to grab my other radio that's not working just for fun. And just see if, if this fixes it or not, if it can bypass the fact that I broke it. Well, well I didn't break it, I, I didn't make a backup, that's what happened. So we're in firmware mode. And when I buy, these aren't expensive, so I have literally about six of them lying around. And I'd actually buy more because they're such fun. So anyway, firmware mode, right firmware, double click. And let's see if it does it because I can see it's writing it. When I did it with Exuma, trying to fix it, it was a bit of a joke. <laughs> it just didn't want to do it where this, this at least gets me to it. Because with the Fadgy Reborn, the early experimental mode, where they do, very, they do seriously warn you 
to make sure you back up the configuration. Um, I didn't do that. Um, it still worked. I, you know, Fadgy Reborn is working, but the thing about Fadgy Reborn is the version I downloaded doesn't transmit. So here we are. It seems to have fixed it. Um, let's put that frequency in. Four, three, four, five, five, zero. And then we need an antenna in there, of course. Think about the next project there, right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm faffing at the end. But anyway, thanks for watching. And all the links will be in the description. But it looks like that has fixed it. Bye for now.